What's up, fam? It's your man, Shawnee Mo. Um, I have tried to, I've done a number of videos, and I was just sitting here looking at quite a few of them. And as much as I have tried to ask the question um, in a politically correct way, as much as I have tried to send the message in a politically correct way, I look at those videos and basically I've just been beating around the bush um, when I try to do what it is that I'm trying to do. And that's to ask this question, well, rather to talk to my own people, um, because I have wrote before that a lot of my great opportunities came at the hands of a white person. Now, in this day and age, a lot of us try to act like or are in denial of the fact that, you know, racism is still alive. Like the the events that have been occurring, I say in the last few years, you know, the one thing we keep asking is why or how come when in all actuality, I personally believe racism never died. Um, not everybody is a racist, but then again, you have to stop and think, are you a racist or not? Um, like me, I try to treat everybody equally, but there are some folks who I just don't like, period, point blank. Um, and the sad part about it is, it's my people. So... I ask this question to my people. Why are we so foobar? Because when you sift through all the bullshit, excuse my French, then again, don't worry about it. Why are we so foobar? Like, we, in my eyes, are the most gifted, the most talented people I have ever seen. We are innovative. We are creative. Um, we can be very passionate about things, stuff. Um, we are, in my eyes, the example of a powerful people. Uh, there was a time when we were a unified people. And when you really stop and think about it, we have contributed a lot to this earth. We've contributed a lot. Now, I haven't lived any other race but this race, and I speak this race only. So for those of you all who are not black and you take offense to what I'm saying, this really isn't even meant for you because I don't know anything about your race. I'm talking about the one that I live and have lived for 48 years and plan on living for another 48. But once again, why are we so foobar? Like we, in my eyes, are the demise of our own selves. We have had numerous opportunities to capitalize and be something real powerful in this world and we just haven't stepped up to the plate. And those of us who have not only stepped up to the plate, but grabbed the mic and basically spoke the truth, a lot of us are being shut down because of a fear. We, I think, and feel very strongly that we have been trained to be afraid. We have been trained to uh, doubt ourselves. I believe that our self-esteem and and how we feel about ourselves is is just you know the catalyst to why we can't and we're constantly asking why we can't work together we can't live together we can't play together we can't do anything and why are we so foobar like it has nothing to do with the white man anymore. They've already established what they're trying to do, what they want to do. Like I said, my best opportunities came from them. And here's the funny part about it. 
the opportunities that they presented me, they did it to help me stand on my own two feet. They didn't do it and say, well, okay, I'm going to give you this and I'm going to show you this and you owe me this forever, not one time. They said, here you go. I'm going to show you how to do this. And then what I want you to do is do it for yourself. Stand on your own. To the maze and Mr. Nice and the Crowlings and all those folks who have found it not a crime to help me learn what I wanted to learn and know what I know right now. I thank you very much. And I promise, just like I did in the beginning, to not let you down. But I got to kind of sort of divert for a minute and talk to my own people because I've been thinking about this a lot. And folks get offended. My own people get offended when I call them to task. And it's not to sound like I am the authoritative figure. It's not to sound like I'm bigger or better or perfect because no one is perfect. We say that, but we don't really pay attention to what we're saying. Like no one really is perfect. I am entitled to make my mistakes. There's a difference between an honest mistake and a deliberate mistake. And yes, I've made some deliberate mistakes. And now I'm much more aware of my own actions in correlation to a deliberate mistake versus my actions in correlation to an honest mistake. I have dealt with a lot of my people and I've never gone in wanting more than I'm entitled to. I've never gone in acting like I know more than the next person. I've always stepped into situations with my people with what I know and the goal of seeing us all succeed but at some point in dealing with my people someone always wants to take more than they're willing to give and I end up with the short end of the stick I sit here if not two years maybe two years maybe a little over two years unemployed no income coming in and let me say this before I get into it I give all praise to the Creator because I know that he is watching over me and mine we still have a roof over our head and trust and believe when I tell you this and I probably shouldn't even be saying this but we fallen way behind and constantly the phone is ringing with so when you gonna hook us up and these folks act like you know I can walk out here today and get a job and some money like money's gonna fall out the tree and I'll be able to pay you off and that's not even the case but I thank the creator for just watching over me and mine and and allowing us to be able to use what we have to contribute and being able to keep what we got we are a very praying family. You might not see me on Sundays at Berg, but I pray. I pray like nobody's business. I could easily be out here committing crimes and staying high and drunk, and I'm not doing that. I spend my days in here trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents every day. Some of you all think that I'm just goofing around and socializing, and I'm not. But when it comes down to interacting with the folks that I was raised and taught how to interact with, when it comes to being around and supporting the folks that I was raised and taught to support, I never get what I give. And then when I step back and look at it, the question I get is, why are we so foobar? Now, this doesn't apply to all of us because there are a lot of us out here that give our all to inspiring and motivating our people. Cats like Sean Bay, 
Prince EA, uh, Les Brown, Tony Reynolds. I could name quite a few people. And I'm really honored to know these folks and be connected to them in some way. And I thank them because they do encourage me to never give up. But when I look at the majority, you know, because these folks, including myself, we're a minority. But when I look at the majority of the people, you are <laughs> the representation of what everybody else sees. And we, the minority, get generalized in your being FUBAR. There are a lot of little girls running around posing as women, messing up the game messing up the business. There are a lot of little boys posing as men, messing up the game, messing up the business of what we are supposed to be doing. And then those of us men and women, what we do is we decide to take a step back because we see that no matter how hard we try to help you help us, you all don't want to do it. And so we throw our hands up. I think that's a learned, trained habit. We are quick and easy to give up on each other, but yet we look for each other to support what it is that we do. And then when we don't get it, we'll take it to another market and only get half of what it's worth and act like we're doing something big when we really even haven't tapped our true potential. There are a lot of us that got our hands and feet and stuff that we really shouldn't even be involved in, especially on the aspect of being in charge of it. I lost, I lost my job. Okay, now understand something. I understood the system. I, I've been in the game for 22 years, and I've learned the system as a matter of fact. Let me keep it 100 with you. It was two white people that showed me the game when it came to doing what I did. They showed me the game. And so what I did was I chose to use what I was taught in favor to do what it was that I wanted to do. So that particular job was the thing, was the source for me to be able to have the internet radio station, for me to be able to do the web hosting, for me to be able to have, and I wish you could see it, I have like maybe four different computers all on at the same time doing different things. I had to buy books, I had to get software, learn this stuff on my own because my own people wasn't really trying to teach me. And when most of them found out I knew what I was doing, then all of a sudden, they tried to stop me, creating bullshit arguments and disagreements in order for me to get upset and walk away. But in this particular case, I got fired by a black person for nothing. They literally created a lie. Now, I know most of you all will say, man, that's gone, that's over with. Yeah, it may be gone and over with, but it still is connected to the question, why are we so fubar? Why can't we embrace each other like we should? And there was a time when we were prospering and working together. We were doing it. And now we're not. It's mass confusion. It's a bunch of us standing on the side going, why are these fools doing this? How come somebody are? Why they say that? This is just the way it is. But the question is, why are we so foobar? Well, let me just give you my own personal thought on why we so foobar. We have evolved, question mark, into an age where you have access and excess. You have access to everything. 
everything. And because you have access to everything, you don't have to pay attention to nothing. You go in here, oh, okay, I got that, boom, you're gone. We can get bored with something so fast and replace it so fast that we don't even have an opportunity to understand the purpose of the access that we have to that thing. We have been taught to believe that money is what makes it all happen. Money is what gets us our power and our respect. And that ain't necessarily true. It might apply to some people, but it don't apply to everybody because not all of us are great money managers. I can say that because I'm not one. Yeah, I play the stock market. I play the stock market now, but the way that the, the stock market is, the stocks that I'm invested in, they aren't really doing anything. And if they are, I signed a paper when I first started doing this. State, and I don't want to know nothing about it. When I'm dead and gone, give it to my children. But we don't we don't manage our money right. We're so busy trying to impress and be seen by more people that don't even care about what we're doing than we are about creating everlasting legacies. I know a lot of people that are connected to so many different other people that have access to so many things that they can help other people out. See, we don't even get that part, right? Like I know these people and I've asked for help. And I'm not saying to the point where, you know, I'm going to rely on them, but just enough for me to be able to get my foot in the door to do what it is that I do so that I can kind of get back up on my feet and start building what it is that I need to build so I can help someone else out and they don't see that. And they hit me with the default phrase, you know, I'm praying for you, keep your head up, everything gonna be okay. When they fail to realize that maybe, just maybe, that thing that could take us both to the next level is within them and all they have to do is take that thing break off a little piece and give it to a brother for him to do what he got to do we look at each other's dollar signs and approach each other in the aspect of what can i get from this individual not what can i give but what can i get And this is why we're so foobar. We expect people to be there, our people, to be there to support us in times of need and trouble or when something tragic happens. But when the shoe is on the other foot, we ain't got time. We too busy. We'll get at you later. Don't worry about it. I got you. And when the, come, and when the time come to get them, you don't. And you hope that they don't call you on that. Well, remember when you said you had me? And then we wonder why our children are living in the state that they're living in right now. Our women, I'm sorry, I got to say this. I'm talking about the majority, not the minority. Y'all know who y'all are. Our women, and, and I had this conversation before, and I said, you know, the main reason why things are in a disarray is because our women like they're searching for something that they aren't giving themselves and they are they're the seal to me they're the seal on that chain that keeps our links strong like you got the father you got the children and then you got the mother and the mother is the seal on those links And the seal is not as strong as it used to be. Because here they are looking for the promise from the man who happens to be a boy. 
that's never been exposed to a real man. They're looking for him to keep that promise. And he don't know nothing about keeping no promises. He don't know nothing about being no man because he ain't been exposed to one. And so they didn't gave up on us. They say they don't want to be involved with mama's boys, but yet they're the ones raising mama's boys. <laughs> or because we're so liberal today, mama's girls. I'm not touching that. To each their own. It's not for me, but I, that's not me to deal with. I don't have to deal with that at the end of the, at the end of my life cycle. I don't have to answer to that. No, it's not right. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not right. But if if it's what keeps you peaceful and happy, by all means, you live that. Just know in the end, you're the one that's gotta answer for it. But we've become so liberal about our way of thinking, about how we live, about how we should do things that we don't even see. And and I said this um, in a in a conversation. I've said this in a post before. Um, I believe, I believe what I was raised on, the teachings of values, morals, and principles like my old heads, raise your hands, those of us who had the opportunity to be raised in that village, in that community where our elders took time out to talk to us because we were raised to stop and listen to our elders like they taught us morals, principles, and values. Because someone taught them morals, principles, and values. But at some point, we allowed something to come into our own communities. We allowed it to come into our own communities and basically wipe out that legacy because they saw it. They knew that it was happening. They could see it because we were a prideful people. We were a unified people. And we allowed something to come into our communities and basically destroy and break that cycle. And we left a whole generation to try to figure out how to raise themselves. And someone came in with some false teaching. And that generation started to believe that what that was was truth. And that generation had children. And they taught them children that teaching. And then they had children. And that's what we see today. We see a lot of fatherless boys trying to figure out exactly what a man is because the girl says he needs to be a man, but she ain't never been exposed to a real woman let alone a real man, because her father wasn't there. And then we try to live by what the supposed guru says when we don't even take time out to stop to find out who we are. And we have a right to do that. But we're so busy grinding and moving and jumping and chasing that we don't take time out to even stop the smell of roses. Grind ourselves to death. We don't like when someone else succeeds or the person is, that is succeeding doesn't want to give back. And that's out of greed because they never had. And when they get a chance to get it, they don't know nothing about sharing because they've never been taught the morals, values, or principles of what sharing really is. And then we sit here and don't want to get in the gear until something tragic happens when we have an opportunity every day to get back to that. Those of us who speak the truth who try to live as true as possibly as possible are, are and that's the minority 
we face more challenges on a daily basis than those of you who are part of the majority. Your challenges are nothing compared to those of us that are in the minority. Our challenges are great because we see exactly what's missing in our communities and we try our best to be the example of what we truly are supposed to be, what that legacy really is all about, why that heritage stands for what it stands for, and you all just laugh at us and treat us with disrespect. And then when something tragic happens to you or when you really need us the most and we don't respond, then you mad with us. But what did you give us? We don't even understand the value in you give what you get. We've been taught this false thing about pray, 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 stand, wait, 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 pray, 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 pray. stand, wait, wait. When it's pray like you believe, move like you believe. Pray like you believe. Move like you believe. Don't stand. Stand means you're complacent. Stand means you ain't doing nothing about it. I'm a believer in God helps those who helps themselves. And we're fubar. Why are we so fubar? What is it that you are afraid to face? See, you're not perfect. Neither am I. It took making a mistake to learn what I know right now. It takes making mistakes to learn what I'm learning and understand what I'm learning. It takes making a mistake. I mean, think about learning how to walk. I mean, you weren't born being able to stand up on your own two feet. And I'm quite sure you fallen if you can remember that far back. And you had to fall quite a few times before you were even able to just stand and balance yourself, let alone take steps. Same thing with riding a bike. You had to fall, and trust me, I'm quite sure those falls were worse than the ones just trying to stand up on your own two feet. You had to fall before you learned how to actually ride a bike, learning how to drive. You, you, had to, you had to make some mistakes in order to be able to do those things. And just because you know how to walk now and just because you know how to ride a bike now and just because you know how to drive now does not mean that you have mastered it completely or that you are perfect in it. It just means that you know how to do it. But there's still so much more to learn. There's still so much more to learn and we don't even embrace that because we no longer understand the morals, values, and principles in learning. Our educational system is messed up because we allowed it to happen. Our relationships and homes are messed up because we allowed it to happen. I need to say this for all them independent women out there that's got their own jobs, their own car, their own money, and don't need no man to justify them. No, you don't need no man to justify you. I understand that. But law of nature says you need a man to keep your legacy going. And trying to prove to a world that ain't paying no attention to you that you are able to do it you wasting time. Instead of just focusing on doing what you have been gifted and blessed to do, you more focused on proving to somebody that you can do it and happen and people ain't paying no attention. Most of them are still getting what they can from you and using you up and you don't even see it. To these 
little boys out here fronting, posing as men that feel like, you know, it's all about what you got. Ride high right now. Because what you are not true to is not going to last forever and it's not going to be as committed to you as you think. It's a lot of us old cats that know about passion and commitment and loyalty and stuff like that. And trust and believe. Just stand back and watch how we interact with each other. You can learn something from that. Because the problem is there, this is why we see our legacies and heritages drop off. Because our children only emulate what they see in us. I remember being told I wasn't going to make it past 21. Shh, I'm 48. <laughs> that says something. I'm 48 and had an opportunity to do a lot of stuff. And go some places that some of y'all only wish you could go. I have come through a whole lot. I was raised by my grandparents. I never knew who my father was. I was abused by my mother. But here I am. Married. Four children. Two in college. One about to graduate from high school. One is about to have her first child. They're healthy. They're happy. And I wasn't supposed to live past 21 just based off of the stuff that I was doing. Yes, it took me a while to understand the teachings of my elders when it came to morals, principles, and values. But at least I knew enough and the creator watched over me and saw that I was actually trying to learn and understand it. That I've been able to be here this long to say what I'm saying right now. Why are we so fubar? Why have we stopped using our ability to learn, want to know how, want to find the truth, want to understand. Why have we stopped using our ability? You can't tell somebody that they can be anything in this world that they want to be, but yet when they look at you, you aren't even remotely close to who you should be. How can you expect Someone to keep you up when you can't even keep your own self up. Sad part is, whatever it is that you're in, if it ain't good, you made the decision. No one forced you. And you got to deal, you got to address the fact that you made that decision. Some of us are at some jobs where it's time to roll. But yet we feel chained to them. And we go in and we don't want to be there and we're sick of it and we're tired of it and the folks don't see the value in us and they aren't treating us well. But yet we keep going back every day in fear. But you got a talent, you got a skill, you got a gift. And there's some of us out here that would love to just connect with you so that we can put our gifts together to make something even bigger. But you're scared. There is definitely power that we have, but we got to learn how to circulate that power within our own selves in order for us to even be able to look at the next person and stand tall. We got to get over that, that F em over mentality. We got to stop acting like just because we don't know 
being afraid to say that we don't know, but we want to, lo- but we want to learn and know how to. You gotta, you you gotta get over that, because not everybody knows everything. And those of us that do know, and do have, we gotta stop being afraid to just take a small bit and give to somebody else, because that thing that you're denying them is blocking your own real blessing. I'm keeping that 100. The more that you sit there and know that voice says you need to get up off yours and give that to them because it's just a drop in the bucket compared to everything that you have. The more that you sit there and deny that person, do you know you are actually blocking your own blessing? Why are we so foobar? Marinate on that.